death, where's your boast, where's your glory? And what of your pretension have you left? How foolish was your pride and vain ambition? You tried and were found wanting in the end. And all you did was all you could, and yet it failed you. For Jesus rose and sank you to the grave. And in resurrection I refuse to fear you. Oh, death, you died and I'm alive instead. Oh, death, where's your body? Where's your triumph? How quickly how the tables turned, it seems. You must have thought the Friday sealed your victory. But Sunday came and trampled on your scheme. And all you did was all you could, and yet it failed you. For Jesus rose and sank you to the grave. And in resurrection I refuse to fear you. Oh, death, you died and I'm alive instead. Oh, you meant for evil, God destined for my good. Kill my body, you could, but still I live on forever. And when I should be no more, louder than I'll sing for death, you are the wide door to where I live on forever. And all you meant for evil, God destined for my good. Kill my body, you could, but still. should be no more louder than I'll sing for death you are the wide door to where I live on forever in the presence of my Savior thank you Jesus for the way that it is finished Thank you, Jesus, for the way that it is done. Thank you, Jesus, for the way of your salvation. Oh, Jesus, for your death defying love. Good morning and welcome to Easter worship with us. While we are disappointed that we can't be together, what a great opportunity to gather around our phones or our computers or TV sets and be able to worship together. So thank you uh, for joining us uh, this Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Good morning, Kid City Kids. Happy Easter. We are so glad that you're here today. Make sure that your family has their Easter box ready to go when the service starts. Go get it now. It's got some important things for you to do inside of it, and we're going to worship together using our Easter box. So we're excited about being able to do that together at Easter Box. There are also some other resources that we have for you. So if you've watched in weeks past, you know, uh, to look up or look down, find the resources tab. There are some, some great resources for our Kids City Kids. Uh, there are some uh, resources as well uh, for our adults. And we would love during this time of not being able to meet together, love for you to still be a part of the work that we're doing by giving online. Uh, so if you go to WCC dot org slash resources. You'll find those resources and then go to wcconline.org slash donate. You'll be able to give. Now here is some great news that we want to share with you uh, this Easter morning. Last week after our online service, we got a text from one of the mothers in our church that her two boys uh, had been thinking about baptism and they were convicted by the message last week. And so we were able to come together on Monday after a FaceTime call with them and celebrate their baptism with them. Join us as we watch their decision they made. I believe I believe Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. I want him. And I want him. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. 
When you confess your faith, I will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Christ. Yes, is a Christ. The Son of the Living God. The Son of the Living God. And I want Him. And I want Him. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. On your confession of faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Darkness into your glorious 
You'll notice in your Easter box, um, there's this little note from all the staff wishing you a happy Easter, and it has peeps. Uh, <laughs> wishing all of our peeps a wonderful Easter. Uh, we thought about having the note say, we really miss all of our peeps. I, I got to tell you, not being together physically with the church is, is difficult. I miss being with all of you. So thank you for being here with us today online. Even if we're not physically together, we're online together, worshiping the same Lord together. And it means so much to me personally that you are here worshiping Jesus Christ with me. Yeah, it, it's, it's a strange kind of Easter in, in other ways too. All the stuff we planned about invite a friend to church day, it's been kind of thrown out the window. I bet a lot of your plans have changed too, especially your immediate plans and short-term goals. Even some of our long-term goals, long goals have probably been derailed or at the very least delayed. Can you imagine being an Olympic athlete and you were just beginning to train for trials and you had your entire schedule laid out? and you were exercising and weight training and dieting, and then all of a sudden it gets shifted. Weddings have been postponed recently. Even funerals have changed. Larry Spielman, chaplain at RNL, told me during our prayer time Wednesday that he actually officiated a funeral online over FaceTime because the family and the funeral home were practicing social distancing. Our first virtual adoption ever took place this past week. Four months ago, our country had the lowest unemployment levels ever in our time. And then about two weeks ago, we had the largest amount of unemployment claims ever filed. Things just flipped instantly. To have your hopes and dreams and careers at one level of expectation, and then they come crashing down to a lower level of reality can be devastating. Now everyone in the United States knows what the Browns fans feel like all the time. The hope that the resurrection of Jesus brings, the hope that we find in Scripture, is not wishful thinking or a longing of how things could be. Scripture defines hope as the expectation of the real, true good that it's on its way. Hope is a certainty that is yet to be fulfilled. And this Easter morning, I know some of you are celebrating and happy, and happy but others are not. Some people are struggling because their prayers haven't been answered or a loved one has died. And some people are battling discouragement because they've been dismissed or rejected or their health is broken. Listen, I think we all understand the seriousness of what's going on. Our businesses are failing, our country is divided, and there's a lot of struggle. We're either living in the struggle or we're just one degree of separation from experiencing the struggle. And maybe your struggle isn't even based on these circumstances. Maybe your struggle is carrying a secret that you have rejected personal purity. You've messed up so many times and violated your own values so often that you've been thinking, there's no hope for me. And now, while others are joyful, you're battling a personal depression, and you've moved from hopeful about so many things to despair. The, despite, the disciples went through this type of crash. They were expecting Jesus, the Messiah, the one they believed in, they expected him to do incredible things, to lead their revolution, to redeem and restore Israel. They'd seen his miracles. They'd experienced his power. They'd even done miracles themselves. And they expected their Savior to usher in a new kingdom. And then just like that, everything flipped. One preacher said their hope that the Messiah, that Jesus, their Messiah, their hope, one, excuse me, one preacher said that the hope of Jesus, their Messiah, was killed on the cross and they stumbled back down Golgotha's skull filled with bitterness and cynicism. Some of them were so scared that they would catch the same torture and death Jesus caught that they locked themselves away hidden, not even going out. If you're discouraged today instead of encouraged, or if you're hurting today instead of reassured, or if you have a deep-seated worry instead of peace, for the next several minutes, I want you to look with me at the resurrection of Jesus Christ and be comforted, nourished, and encouraged. Because He is risen, our hope can be restored. In Luke chapter 24, we find the account of what eyewitnesses saw when they went to the tomb where they had laid the body of Jesus. If you'll turn in Luke chapter 24, verse 1 is where we'll start. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, 
the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Skip down just a few verses to verse 13, and that's where we're going to pick up the account. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen visions of angels who said he was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. You see how these disciples had lost hope? Everybody lives or dies by the hope they have. Every person listening to this sermon, and I don't know what you're going through, and maybe I don't even know you very well at all, but I know that you have hopes. We all live by hope. People go to school and they hope for graduation. People graduate and they hope for a job. And people who are single may hope to be married. And people who are married, sometimes they hope for kids. The hope train just goes on and on. Recently, I read about a woman who was hoping to fix her husband, and kind of tongue-in-cheek, she ended up writing about it online on a tech support page. Here's what she wrote. Dear tech support, last year I upgraded from boyfriend 5.0 to husband 1.0, and noticed a slowdown in the overall performance, particularly the flower and jewelry applications that had operated flawlessly under boyfriend 5.0. In addition, Husband 1.0 uninstalled many other valuable programs such as Romance 9.5 and Personal Personal Attention 6.5, but installed undesirable programs such as NFL 5.0 and NBA 3.0. And now Conversation 8.0 no longer runs and House Cleaning 2.6 simply crashes the system. I've tried running Nagging 5.3 to fix these problems, but to no avail. What can I do? Signed. A desperate housewife. I'm sure she wasn't expecting a response, but one of the IT guys wrote back. Dear desperate housewife, first, keep in mind, boyfriend 5.0 is an entertainment package, while husband 1.0 is an operating system. At the command line, try entering, I thought you loved me, and download tiers 6.2 to get guilt 3.0 up and running. If all works as designed, Husband 1.0 should then automatically run the application's Jewelry 2.0 and Flowers 3.5, but remember, overuse can cause Husband 1.0 to default to Grumpy Silence 2.5 and Beer 6.1. Beer 6.1 is a nasty program that will make Husband 1.0 vulnerable to the dreaded fat belly virus and embed snoring loudly wave files in your system. Whatever you do, Do not install Mother-in-Law 1.0 or try to reinstall another boyfriend program. These are not supported applications and will crash Husband 1.0. In summary, Husband 1.0 is a great program, but it does have limited memory and cannot learn new applications quickly. You might consider additional software to improve memory and performance. I personally recommend Hot Food 3.0 and Lingerie 9.9. Regards, 
tech support. Here's the thing. The disciples' hopes had come crashing down, and all the changes they thought that were going to happen disappeared literally overnight. They needed their hope restored, rekindled, and rebooted. For some of us, like these disciples, hope unfolds later than we'd like. We just read in Scripture one of the saddest phrases ever spoken, and one some of us know all too well. We had hoped. That's their story. And I think it's often our story too. We had hoped. But now we don't know what to believe and we've all but given up. You've no doubt felt what Cleopas and his friend were feeling on the road that day. They were clearly disappointed in themselves. All the disciples had abandoned Jesus when the arrest was made. And disappointment can lead to, to, quit, to guilt very quickly. So I imagine they were feeling guilty too. And I'm sure they were bitter. They had evil religious leaders. They were living under a pagan evil government. And their misconceptions about Jesus had left them disillusioned. One preacher wrote this phrase. He said, We can get disillusioned if we have misconceptions about Jesus and what he will do for us. If we see Jesus as a personal defender who will protect us against disappointment in people, then we will end up being disillusioned. Remember, Jesus died abandoned and forsaken. He goes on, If you see Jesus as a rich benefactor who will grant you wealth and success, you will be disillusioned. Because remember, Jesus died stripped and penniless. And if you see Jesus as a wise counselor who will solve all your family problems and bring instant harmony, you will be disillusioned. Remember, Jesus' mothers and brothers didn't believe in him, and his father was absent by the time we get to the cross. If you believe that just because you're a Christ follower, you will never suffer or fall to temptation or ever get sick, you will be disillusioned with Christianity pretty quickly. Jesus is our protector, and He is our benefactor, and He is our counselor, and He is our great physician. But we must see Him in the light of the character that He is developing in us, and we must see Him in the light of the eternal life He is granting to us, or we too will be disillusioned. And this is where Jesus takes them. Jesus' resurrection brings them three comforts. He wants them to have their understanding refined, He wants their sight repaired, and He wants their hope restored. So he starts going over with them what they missed. They had read all the prophecies about the Messiah coming in glory, but they had misunderstood, overlooked, or ignored what the prophets had said about the Messiah's suffering. The first comfort of our Lord Jesus is to have our understanding refined. Look at verse 25. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all the prophets, all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, risen Jesus, has a way of helping us make sense of things, even when our circumstances in life seem to be out of control. Jesus' resurrection helps us understand and start to really get it. We need to understand simple truths that Jesus was explaining to those disciples that day. Number one, God is not defeated in suffering, but God reveals through Scripture, through the prophets, through the church, through Jesus' resurrection, that He triumphs, God triumphs through the suffering of Christ on the cross. Let me repeat that. God is not defeated in suffering, but triumphs through the suffering of the cross. And And the number two thing we need to understand is that hope delayed is not hope denied. The scriptures point this out time and time again, these two truths. Our risen Jesus is proof of them. God is not defeated in suffering, but triumphs through Jesus on the cross, and hope delayed is not hope denied. Our hope being restored is, happens when we have an, our understanding refined. In World War II, a Scottish chaplain and Professor MacDonald from Glasgow were both shot down behind enemy lines and were taken as prisoners of a war in Germany. The Germans had divided the prisoners of war into two camps, the captured British soldiers on one side and the captured Americans on the other. MacDonald was placed with the Americans and the Scottish chaplain with the British. And the two would meet at the wire fence that divided them every day to exchange greetings. The Germans didn't know it, but the Americans had made a makeshift radio that enabled them to get news from the outside. And that little glimpse of hope was more precious to them than food. So MacDonald would come over and share the latest headlines with the chaplain. 
And one day, the Americans heard over their radio that the German high command had surrendered and the war was over. MacDonald couldn't wait to take the news to his friend, and then MacDonald stood at the fence and watched the Scottish chaplain disappear into the British barracks. A moment later, a roar of celebration came from the barracks. Life in that camp was transformed. Men who were prisoners were walking around singing and shouting and waving at the guards and even laughing at the dogs. When the Germans finally heard the news three days later, they fled into the darkness, leaving the gates unlocked. The next morning, the British and the American POWs walked out as free men. Yet they knew they had truly been set free three days earlier by the news that the war was over. That same feeling of celebration, of being set free, of having hope restored, happened with our two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Pick up at verse 28. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It's true, the Lord is risen and appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by, by them when he broke bread. The disciples on the road that day had a whole lot working against them. They didn't believe the eyewitness testimonies of the women at the tomb, and they didn't understand what the prophets had taught in Scripture, and they couldn't even see Jesus when he was walking right beside them. Some of my friends have pointed out to me that none of us can actually see Christ walking with us, helping to carry our burdens, unless he makes himself known. And I want you to see that just because they didn't understand and didn't recognize Jesus, it doesn't change the fact that Jesus had been with them all along. We need our sight repaired too. Paul prays for our spiritual eyes to be opened in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. That's the verse you have in your box. Would you go on and get out this yellow page in your box and read this verse out loud with me? Here it is, starting in verse 18 as the New Living Translation. Read it with me out loud. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Do you see how Paul prays that our eyes would be opened? That we would not only understand Christ, but we would know that he's with all believers. Everyone who has put their trust in him, Jesus is with us. This is a prayer we all need to memorize and pray that God would repair our eyes spiritually to see and know the risen Lord more clearly to have our love increased and to understand that He is with us. He is risen and He has conquered sin and Satan and even death. Our hope is restored because we can expect Him to conquer sin in our lives and give us a resurrection from the dead too. To see and know that He has not left us and He is helping us to bear our burdens. He actually reaches down and sometimes even carries us. Would you make Ephesians chapter 1, 18 through, 28, through 20 your memory verse and prayer for the next, dif- next several days? Uh, I know it might be difficult to, to memorize for some of you. Um, someone has condensed and paraphrased this prayer so it would focus on three areas. Eyesight, love, and closeness. I encourage you to memorize the scripture, but an easier prayer to memorize might be this one. Jesus, today, I want to see you more clearly 
love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. Show yourself to me. Help me. Amen. And if we have our understanding refined and our eyesight repaired, we really will have our hope restored. Now, most often, we see the presence of Christ through Scripture and in our prayer, and we see His presence coming out of us, the church. And He has told us that we are to let our light shine like a city on a hill. We are to be the light of the world, and we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. Salt is only good on food if it's outside the salt shaker. And that's a difficult thing to do if you're stuck at home. So in your box are some cards to write some encouraging notes. First, pray and ask God which of your family members or friends need to see Jesus through your card. And then Google some encouraging passages of Scripture to include on your card. Write to your friend or family. Let them know that you miss them and that you love them and that there's a passage of Scripture that you think might encourage them. Try to send all your cards this week. You can let me know you sent a card by posting the scripture you used online at WCC Church Online. Don't tell me you sent the card. Don't let me know who you sent it to. Just post the scripture and the keyword hashtag WCC Online Church and we'll know that you followed through. Who knows, your card might be the only Jesus someone will ever see. Why don't you watch and see how God will use your encouragement to restore hope for your loved ones? Today, I'm confident that Jesus will refine your understanding of Scripture as you read it with His purpose in mind, and He will repair your eyesight as you pray to see. And I know the risen Lord restores hope. When we meet together physically again, uh, we'll have a time of communion together, and it will be beautiful. And we'll have our risen, risen Savior showing up through our word and our time of prayer and our invitation. But we can do those three things today online. In your box is a package of crackers and some grape mix drink for your water. Why don't you go on and get your crackers out and mix your juice for our communion time. You can be mixing that while I continue to talk. In the passage of Luke 24 that we just read, there was something about breaking the bread that impressed the disciples. Something either reminded them of Jesus maybe feeding the 5,000 or maybe how he held it up for them to see and prayed over it. Maybe the way he gave thanks reminded them of how he raised Lazarus from the dead. And Luke uses that term, breaking a bread, other places to describe communion. Maybe God allowed them to see Christ in the breaking of bread because he wanted them to continue that memorial communion, the Eucharist, just like he had commanded them. You know, Jesus is with believers at the dinner table and on our couches and in our homes and even in the midst of coronavirus. He can be the guest in every one of our houses. For every believer, he says, I am with you always. And sometimes it's made most clear to us that he is with us when we encounter him in communion. Communion reminds us that our past is forgiven. Christ is with me in the present and my future is secure. Colossians 2, 13 through 15 says, You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Jesus also is with me in my present problems. Galatians 2.20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And finally, communion reminds us that our future in Christ can be secure. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. 2 Corinthians 4, 16-18 Why don't you go ahead and participate in communion, the body and blood of Christ now.
thank you, Lord, for giving us forgiveness of our past, being with us here in the present, and securing our future. Amen. Last week, we offered the invitation that if anyone has not accepted Christ as their Savior, that they should make their intentions known publicly on Facebook or on our webpage. Or even give the office a call and we would help them with their next best steps. You, you saw what happened when Ethan and Eli came forward online, and that's another first for us. And we showed you their baptism before church uh, started today, before our service started today, and that was awesome. That can be you too. If you want to give your life to Christ, would you make your intentions known publicly? Would you let people know, either on our Facebook page or on our webpage, that you love Jesus and want to commit to Him forever? And then contact us and let us know so that we can help you take the next best step. And maybe um, it's doing a prayer of repentance, or maybe it's being baptized, buried with Jesus into His death, burial, and resurrection. That is a beautiful way that Christ gave us to let us know that He will be with us forever. And if you have any prayer requests, would you put them on Facebook or send us an email or maybe even call the office? We want to keep praying for you. Uh, we hope to pray with you on the phone and online and all the ways that we can. But you have to let us know. We'll keep trying to find you and we'll keep giving you calls and we'll keep checking in on you. I hope your small group leaders have checked in on you too. But let's keep praying together as a church. Let's keep looking forward to Christ's presence with us. Let's keep having our hope restored. And I look forward to worshiping with you again soon. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Happy Easter. Also, make sure to check out wccconline.org resources for some great kids videos and worship times to use this week. And while you're checking out the resources, uh, please go to wccconline.org slash donate so you can still be a part of the work that we're doing uh, by giving online uh, to help support the ministries and missions that are happening uh, both here in our community and around the world. Uh, we're so thankful, again, that you joined us uh, today. Please, let's stay connected. Uh, continue to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It was so fun uh, last week to watch people do the Easter egg hunt, and we want to continue to connect uh, through that way. Uh, so make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. While it's been a different Easter, the good news is that Jesus is alive, that the hope that He gives us is real. Hope that you feel that today and that carries you into this next week. Have a great week.